Now, welcome back to the CNN Saturday morning. And in our 9 o'clock half hour, as we do every Saturday, we talk health care. So right now, we're going to be talking about, trying to do a reset here for you. A lot of people have been, certainly the terrorism has been on people's minds lately, also the economy. But health care, it's time to start this back up again. We've got two bills we're going to be looking at. So what is exactly in those two bills? We're going to refocus for you this morning. Uh, two health care bills out there, but do you know the difference between the two. Now give us just a few minutes here and we're going to break this down the simplest way possible. Of course, I need some help to do that. Uh, our national health care expert, Ken Thorpe, back with us this morning. Always good to have you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Hey, welcome back uh, here with us. We've got these two proposals. We've got the House and we've got the Senate. Now they're going to try to merge these two. Uh, the sum of the difference, let's start with how many Americans would be covered in each bill. Well, in the Senate bill, the estimates that are about 31 million people who don't have coverage would get insurance. In the House bill, it would be closer to 36 million. A part of it is because the House bill is more expensive. Uh, it would cost about 1.1 trillion over the next 10 years. Uh, the Senate bill costs about 871 billion. So differences in costs and differences in coverage. Now, differences in coverage, you're talking about how many people will be covered. Some of these people are going to be covered because they're going to be forced to get insurance. There are going to be some fines also if they don't get it. So what are the different fines between these two bills uh, to force people, incentivize them to get this health care coverage? Well, there again, there are differences. In the Senate bill, starting in uh, 2014, uh, you'd have to buy coverage or pay a $95 fine. And by the time you get uh, several years out uh, to 2017, 2018, uh, up to $750 a month, but capped at 2% of your income. Okay. Uh, in the House bill, a little different. Uh, you'd pay up to 2.5% of your income if you don't have health insurance coverage. This could get a little pricey. Before we move on to number three, I, I, are some people, is it going to work out for them to try to, I guess, balance it out? How much do I make? How much would the fine be kind of a thing? Well, I, I think it would. I mean, the, the House bill has a little bit of an advantage. It costs more, but the, uh, the benefit is, is that people would pay less for their coverage. So if you're a family or earning $40,000, you'd pay $430 a year less for health insurance in the House bill. So uh, people are going to have to make the decisions. Is it better to pay for the uh, insurance? or better to pay the penalty. To pay the fine. All right, let's go to the third one. This is the big doozy here, the public option. This is going to be, uh, would you say this is going to be the big issue between these two bills? Well, I think that they're starting to resolve the differences here. The House, uh, the Senate bill really does not have a public option. Uh, they provide for two national plans that would be administered by the same uh, group in, uh, in the federal government that uh, runs uh, the health care programs for the members of Congress. Uh, one of those plans would have to be a not-for-profit plan. Mm -hmm. The House bill still has a public option included, uh, but it's not as uh, robust as it was originally. It would allow the secretary to negotiate rates uh, with private health plans, but probably not a big premium difference between the public option and traditional private health and plans. And it sounds like more and more we're starting to hear them back away from that public option. Even that language of public option has been such a political football. Let's move on to the fourth question here between the two. Who exactly and how exactly, I guess, but who is going to be paying for these two bills, the Senate bill and the House bill? I guess that's us, but how are we going to be paying for that? Well, that, here there are really big differences. Both bills would result in a reduction in the deficit over the next 10 years. Okay. Uh, they both save about the same amount of money in the Medicare and Medicaid programs. But where they really differ is the revenue sources. Uh, in the Senate bill, two sources. One is big fees on health plans in the drug industry, yeah. about $264 billion there. And secondly, a 40% tax on health care plans that are Cadillac plans. For a single plan, $8,500 a year. Uh, for a family plan, $23,000 a year something favored by the White House, uh, something very uh, strongly opposed by the unions. The House side goes a completely different direction. Uh, they would impose a 5.4 percent tax uh, on individuals who earn over $500,000 and for families who earn over a million. So they're going to have to reconcile those very big differences. Very big differences and uh, they get started up. I think the House comes back next week and then the Senate after that right. and it's time to get it on and we are going to be seeing your face plenty get used to seeing that face folks ken thorpe you're going to be hearing a lot from him. we certainly appreciate as always again happy new year to you happy we'll be new. talking to you again soon betty did you did you get all that yes i'm taking it in i took notes we're good all well right. you know there is a new due date in fact for the health care reform bill details on when the most sweeping change to the country's medical system could become law